It's Papa Patras, also known as Peter Rocker Crowfoot, and uh, I'm known, as I'm sure many of you uh, have seen on the internet, as the nationally acclaimed homeowner's advocate. And we're here for lesson number two on Roofing 101. This is part of a series of your free added value service from uh, my company, Crowfoot Homes LLC, Build and Design. What we try and do is we try and exceed the local building standard codes because you got to remember the codes in every county across the country, um, that's the minimum, folks, that you can get away with. We put lifetime warranties on all of our roofs and all of our work, and so in order to do that, uh, we have to make sure we do best business practices and that we do a job that uh, meets our standards. All of our installers and handymen, architects, uh, structural engineers, they're all pre-screened, pre-qualified, criminal background checks, and also uh, factory certified. Now I'm up on a roof in a uh, subdivision. I'm not going to kick any dirt on the developers or the builders. But clearly this roofing system up here has a lot of issues. You can see rust over there on that dryer stack. And this is 12 to 15 years ago. This was a typical roofing system. You can see the ventilation. We've got six what they're called in construction terms as mushroom vents. Now, the reason they have positioned those uh, vents near the top of this roof system, this is known as a gabled roof system, is because air rises to the highest point. And when air rises, it's going to have a way of escape. But unfortunately, this uh, is an antiquated system that has failed. Um, what now is done on new homes when they're built is they use uh, Lowe's sells this system. It's a wonderful system. It's called a Croba Ridge Vent System. It's a passive echo-friendly ventilation system where at the top you see those are called ridge caps. With the new system what our installers do is they set their skill saw blade about a quarter of an inch and they remove all of those shingles there ridge vent shingles and what we do is we take the skill saw and we cut an inch and a half on each side of the roof decking. Now this roof decking has probably got the OSB board. In construction uh, lingo it's called a splatter board. It's a, um, a 4 by 8 sheet of sheathing plywood not really plywood, but it's uh, OSB board, splatter board, as I just mentioned, and it's compressed wood with glue. Now the danger in that, if water hits that, it swells up really bad. You can see real closely this roof where there's humps. That's where water has penetrated. You see right here, you've got about six accidents, water penetration points, and what happens is the sun bakes it really, really day in, day out, and it cracks. And so the integrity of the roofing cement is compromised. And you can see right there that little hump, that's where that uh, OSB board is swollen. And you've got it all the way down on this roof. And then right here, what happens when you don't have adequate ventilation is all the fasteners, in this case, Staples, this is a no-no. It's not really used for uh, installing roofs anymore, people that are trying to do it right. Because here's what happens. You see that? It backs up. So on this roof, you've got all these fasteners backing up. You've got multiple, multiple leaks. And there's a better view of a ridge vent. It's actually not a ridge vent, but 
what we're going to do over the course of the next week or two, we're going to put a ridge vent system in. Now, 101 lesson is you want to go early in the morning. It's about 7.30 in the morning, and this is a flat bar. You take it and you slide it underneath there. It pops up early in the morning, and you can see that's where that fastener is. So we're going to take it. And you can see it just pops right up. And through the magic of editing, we'll come back in a minute and I will uh, install and apply the adhesive that will seal these holes. Believe it or not, these little holes, water can penetrate into there and cause problems. So once again, this is part of our new series for all you weekend warriors, those of you who maybe you're having somebody else do it. It's very important that your roofing company be bonded, insured, licensed. All of these things are real critical and also um, to make sure that they have insurance. Now the best way you can tell if somebody's insurance is not expired, because that's a big problem according to the district attorneys, a lot of complaints where um, in these desperate economic times a lot of people have not been able to keep up their insurances so you always want to make sure you get the name of the broker or the uh, insurance company and you have that uh, office send you in the mail a copy of their certificates of insurance liability and workman's comp that's in case there's a fatal accident those loved ones family are protected and uh, they're remunerated and they're able to have um, funds to take care of you know arrangements final arrangements I know that sounds terrible but that's the reality of this work you can see this is very very dangerous work look how steep this roof is now I'm up here sitting just as comfortable as can be I've been doing this for a long time this is called a magic carpet. And what it is, it's just, uh, it's foam. And it acts almost like Velcro. You've got asphalt on top of this petroleum based shingle, and it just grips. So you can see, I'm just sitting here just as comfortable as can be. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. And we're going to take care of this client. We're going to get all of these things taken care of. And through the magic of editing, we'll show you the finished project in a little bit. All right. Thank you.